Next, we'll be looking at the timeline and the project monitor in Premiere. These two panels are somewhat linked, so we'll be talking about them together. The timeline panel is where you'll build your sequence, arrange clips, make simple audio adjustments, and change the timing of edits. A sequence is a Premiere project file. Constructing a sequence is largely placing clips one after another from left to right inside the timeline panel. Let's do that now. I'm going to take some of my marked clips that we used previously and I'll place them in the timeline. As soon as I put the first clip into the timeline, Premiere is going to go ahead and make a sequence for me. The sequence will be named after the clip that you drag into the timeline first. Since this sequence name is not very intuitive, I need to change that. I'll go back to the main project window and you can see here's our raw footage folder that contains all of our media clips and here is our new sequence. Let's go ahead and let's rename this. We can simply click it once and then we'll go ahead and rename this. I'll just call this Ocean Things. As you can see, as soon as you rename the sequence, the sequence will also be renamed in the timeline as well as in the program monitor. If I scrub through the timeline, you will see that the timeline playback head in the program window will correspond with the timeline playback head in the timeline. These two panels are essentially linked. The program monitor displays what your project is going to look like. The timeline panel is where you can construct your project. Let's add a few more clips to our project. When you place new clips into the timeline, you will see that the clips magnetically snap to each other. This is a result of snapping being on. As soon as you create a project, snapping will turn on. This makes it very easy to ensure that your clips line up together. If for whatever reason you don't want snapping on, you can simply click to turn it off and now when you move the clips, you won't have that magnetic snap. It does make it a little bit harder to line things up. The keyboard shortcut to toggle snapping on and off is to click S on your keyboard. And as soon as you do that, the snapping feature will be turned back on. Let's add one more clip to our timeline. I'll go ahead and add this clip of the whale shark to the end. Now, as you can see, I would have to scroll to see all three of the clips in my timeline. If you come down here to the lower portion of the timeline, you can zoom in and out of the timeline. This allows you to have a better view of what's happening within the timeline, as well as being able to see the overall timeline sequence. In addition to being able to zoom in and out of the timeline in this way, you can also use plus to zoom in and minus to zoom out. If you want to make the entire timeline fit within the viewable space, you'll click your backslash key. That makes everything fit. If you click backslash again, it's going to return to the previous view. So this acts as a toggle. All of the other shortcuts that we talked about in regards to the source monitor are going to work in the same way. So I can use L to play forward. I can use K to pause and J will allow me to play backwards. You can also use the right and left arrow keys on your keypad to move one frame at a time. If you use shift right arrow, for instance, you'll be moving five frames at a time and shift left arrow will move you back five frames at a time. Currently, I just have one video track and one audio track. My video and audio tracks are linked by default. So if I try to move one of these tracks, the audio track is going to move in conjunction with the video track. You can give a little bit more height to either the video or the audio tracks. And when you do increase the height, what's going to happen is you'll get a little thumbnail for each of the clips. This can be very helpful because it gives you an idea of what that clip contains. If we increase the height on the audio track, we'll get more options to see the waveform. And as you can see, we'll actually see both of the right and left channels for our audio. In addition, more options will be available when we have more height available within our project. If I click the spacebar, my clip is going to play. We will see the video in the program window and hear the audio. 
If for some reason I don't want to hear the audio, I can click M. This will mute the audio. So if I play now, you will see that just the video is going to play, but I will not have any of the sound displaying. Conversely, if we go ahead and click the eyeball in the video track, this will hide the video track. And now if I click play, we will only hear the audio. If you want to have a keyboard shortcut to collapse or expand your video and audio tracks, you're going to use Shift Plus. Shift Plus will allow you to expand your audio tracks to this height. Shift Minus is going to collapse the audio tracks to be the smallest height. I'll go ahead and expand these as the thumbnails are going to be helpful. And since I don't have too many audio tracks, this will allow me to see what's going on easily within my project. If we were to grab another one of our video clips, and let's just go ahead and mark an endpoint, and then I'll just move my timeline and mark an out point. If I grab this clip and I drag it above the existing clips, What's going to happen is this new clip will obscure the clips below it. So here is the turtle clip. And if I click play, you'll see that even though the playback head is over the turtle area, we now see the whale shark. And that's because the whale shark is sitting on a separate track or above the original lower track. Video tracks play as a stack. So any clip on an upper video track will appear in front of a clip on a lower video track. When we play the sequence and view it in the program monitor, audio tracks will play simultaneously. When we have multiple audio tracks, they will actually mix together and play at the same time. You can use these tools to do various things within your timeline. Right now we have the selection tool. If I decide I want to get rid of this upper whale shark clip, all I have to do is select it and then just delete and that will get rid of it. If you want to select multiple clips, you can click hold and drag and tag multiple clips. And now you can see that I have two clips selected. This just gives you a quick introduction to how we can create a basic sequence and some of the ways that we can navigate through the timeline and in turn navigate through the program monitor. If you take a look at the program monitor, you will see that for the most part, it has very similar sorts of navigation to the source monitor. All of the same shortcuts that we discussed earlier will work in the program monitor. There's a lot more to learn with the timeline and with Premiere in general, but this will get you up and running and allow you to start thinking about how you can edit in Premiere. This will give you some good foundational skills that we'll be building upon as we learn more about using Premiere.